everyone, Alicia McGill here with Math Labs. Today we're going to look at Content Standard 6.ns.1 of the 6th grade content standards um, for the Common Core. And this corresponds with Lab 3.1 of the Math Labs program. So everyone should have their lab book open to Section 3.1 and we're going to read the objective together. I'll read it aloud, you read it in your head. Okay, I can use a visual model or picture to find the quotient involving a whole number and a unit fraction. And quotient, if you don't know, if you forgot from elementary school or fifth grade, is the answer when you divide. Okay, remember product is the answer when you multiply and you also have some indifference for adding and subtracting respectively, but quotient is the answer when you divide. Okay, now many of you remember this from fifth grade, but we're gonna use the visual model so that we really understand the concept. We get an idea of what's going on, and then we can further our studies involving a fraction divided by a fraction that's not a unit fraction, okay? So it could be like two-thirds, and then a fraction divided by a fraction. Ones with remainders, without remainders. So we'll go deep, deep, deep enough to connect to the core, right? And then we'll apply it, we'll write story problems, solve story problems, so it'll be great fun in this unit. So this is the uh, first lesson of Lab 3.1 involving division of fractions. All right, I'm gonna get right at it. There's three parts to each problem. Um, that is to write the meaning, okay, um, along with the visual model, to use estimation, and so you have to say greater than or less than one, and then of course to write your answer as the quotient, all right? So our first problem here, I'm gonna rewrite it over here so you can see it, four divided by one third. And the first thing that we need to do is talk about the meaning. What does this mean? Well, if you recall using whole numbers, ta-da, I have my little expo holster here. Um, <laughs> whole numbers such as, I don't know, let's just say 12 divided by, I'm gonna use similar numbers here, um, four, okay? We all know that that's three, right? But a visual model, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. Using a visual model, we start with 12, so we have 12. Right? And we're seeing how many groups of four are in 12, okay? And we could divide this into four parts and see how many are in each part, like three. But for our purposes, because this is how we're gonna use the same concept with division of fractions, we're gonna say how many groups of four are in 12? So we're gonna circle them. Well, here's a group of four, right? Here's a group of four, right? And here's a group of four. So. How many groups? One, two, three groups, all right? And we could check using multiplication, if you recall, these are inverses. So three times four, so here's the check. Quotient times the divisor, three times four, should equal your dividend, or 12. And for you remembering the setup, it looked like this, 12 divided by four, and of course, here you have your divisor and your dividend. So I always tell the kids, the dividend is in, in dividend. And then, of course, you have your divisor, and your quotient is the answer, which is 3. And you remember to check 3 times 4, and so that's one way to look at it. So we're going to take what we already know, and now apply that to division of fractions, okay? So you should be familiar with using whole numbers and dividing, and now we're going to practice with dividing fractions, okay? And in this case, a whole number. So we're going to start with how many wholes? 4. You know, I like to use bars, and the reason why is because we're going to divide these into thirds, so it's just a lot easier of a visual. Plus, a, a bar here is something that we're going to use consistently in our units of studying fractions and decimals and percents, and so um, we're going to stick with this bar model here. So we have four holes, all right, and we're going to see how many thirds, so we need to divide this into thirds, you guessed it. So here's two lines make a third. So we have three parts into each, so each of these are one third, okay? Our goal, and I'm not gonna label the rest just for the sake of time, but our goal, again, for meaning, is to see how many thirds go into four. Now, I talked about using estimation. So, do you think it's greater than one or less than one? Well, a third is pretty small, right? So that's gonna go into four a lot of times, right? So it's gonna be greater than one. So our option on your lab sheet is less than one or greater than one. And we're gonna circle the greater than one, so that's our estimation. And then we're gonna find the quotient here by circling groups of one third, okay? Here's a group of one third, here's a group of one third, here's a group of one third. Many of you remember that, there are three thirds in a whole. But we have four holes here. So we have three, six, 
9, and you guessed it, 12. So our quotient is 12. So a third goes into 4 12 times, all right? And what we're going to do now is just check that, okay? So we're going to just draw a little check mark here. I'm going to check my work, so 12 times 1 third, so our quotient here, times our divisor should equal our 4, which is our dividend. And I like to look at the model to reinforce that. You're doing a third 12 times, right? A third, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right? 12 times. And it should equal 4. And in fact, if we multiply straight across and remember that strategy from 5th grade, 12 divided by 3 is 4. And um, actually, we just reviewed that in lab 3.0, which isn't a 6th grade standard, but I wanted you to see that the product of fractions are important because here, look at that, they come up. So we see that the answer is 4 and it checks. And so we know that we have confidence in our answer. We've proven that we have a visual model to support um, our solution and, and defend our reasoning. So we have a visual, we have an estimation, and we have a check. These are all important strategies that good mathematicians practice. All right, the next one we're going to do on our whiteboards together. So if you could take out your handy dandy whiteboard, and then when I call your color, you're going to raise the color of your whiteboard um, that corresponds to the color that I call out. Here is the problem. Let's look at 3 divided by 1 fifth. Okay, we're going to just go through those uh, three parts together. Okay, and then the last one you'll do on your own. So, the first part on the lab says, what's the meaning of this? Okay, so we're going to write one sentence here, and the meaning is how many one-fifths go into three, or how many one-fifths are in three. Okay, so go ahead and write that down. How many one-fifths are in three? That's, that's a good question. Okay, and we're going to figure that out in just a moment. And I want you to say, is this less than one or greater than one? Let's make an estimation, okay? So a one-fifth is small, so it's going to go into three a lot of times. <laughs> I always say that, a lot of times. Um, if this were three divided by three, it would be one. But this number, three divided by three, is much smaller than three. And so therefore, this goes into three multiple times. All right, so we're going to say greater than one, okay? And now we're going to draw our visual model of three divided by one so we need three holes, right? Let's go ahead and do this with me. Let's draw three holes together. And the last one you're going to do on your own. Okay? So we have three holes. Now, what are we looking at fitting in here? So what is our denominator or our fraction? Okay. It's one fifth. So we need to divide our bars to show fits so that we can then circle and work with fits, right? So we're going to draw four lines to make five parts. One, two, three, four, right? That makes fits. One fifth, one fifth, one fifth, one fifth, and one fifth. Okay, so we draw those four lines and now we can just kind of continue them because that will go all the way through all three bars. Okay, and I'm not going to label those. So go ahead and finish that part. This is important, this visual model, but once we get really good at this and we actually start using the algorithm, which is the procedure, we won't need visual models anymore. But they may come up. You might see them on a quiz or a test or maybe a park assessment or an SBAC, Smarter Balance Assessment. And so we want to be really skillful with the models and know how to analyze them so that we can write problems based on them, critique the reasoning of others that use a model that may or may not work. So it is important for us to have this concept down. All right, enough yapping. Let's circle our fifths. So how many fifths go into three? Well, I'm feeling green right now. I don't know why. So how about there's a fifth, there's a fifth, there's a fifth. So we have five fifths in one hole. And now in two holes we have ten. And in three holes we have fifteen, right? And so our quotient is, you guessed it, fifteen. Okay? So we count those, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. We see that 1 fifth goes into 3 15 times. We're going to go ahead and check this now. So I'm just going to make my little check mark here. Check. 
and we use multiplication, our inverse, just like we do with any problem, right? 72 divided by 8. You can always forget that one. But remember, you can check 9 times 8 should equal 72. So we're going to do that same thing. Solve it this way. We're going to look at 15 times a fifth, and that should equal 3. And it does because we, whoops, I went a little too fast. I was excited about that quotient. 15 times 1 is 15. 1 times 5 is 5. 15 fifths is 3. And this visual model also proves the inverse. 1 fifth, 15 times, there's a fifth, 15 times gives you 15 fifths, which is equal to 3. So um, that's a cool thing to look at. Maybe you didn't recognize that your model can be served kind of to solve two different problems, both the initial one and the check, which is pretty cool. Um, right now, you're going to do another one on your own and involving um, the same type of problem. And then you're going to work with your partner and you're going to do the exact same thing. Okay, so we'll reconvene um, in about 20 minutes. I'm going to set the timer. Okay, so you're going to just draw your models and then you're going to put your answers in the table and then you're going to analyze that table and look at, well, here's the problem, here's the answer. Is there a shortcut? Many of you are looking at this and you're like, I already see it. Well, we're going to go through this process and great if you saw it with one or two examples. That's awesome. But the table is really going to help um, students to see this pattern, analyze the pattern, and then come up with the shortcut or the algorithm, that procedure for dividing fractions. All right, we'll see you next time. Adios.